4.7 graphs of linear inequalities. We're doing MA 912, AR 9.4, and 9.6. Determine whether an ordered pair is a solution of a linear inequality in two variables. Sketch graphs of linear inequalities in two variables. Use linear inequalities to model and solve real life problems. So here's a refresher back to your inequality graphing. Um, if you see AX plus BY less than C, it's called an open graph, so you would see dashed lines. If you see AX plus BY less than or equal to C, then it's going to be a closed graph, so you would have a solid line. AX plus BY greater than C, open with a dashed line. AX plus BY greater than or equal to C would be closed or a solid line. And then depending on how they are evaluated with using the origin point zero zero would determine if you shade above the line or below the line. So we're going to start with example one. Example one, A, B, and C, it says determine whether each ordered pair is a solution of 3x minus y greater than or equal to negative one. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the equation and substitute in each of the ordered pairs and see if it makes a true statement. So we're going to write the equation 3x minus y greater than or equal to negative 1. And then I'm going to substitute in 0, 0 for x and y. So 3 times 0 minus a 0 is a greater than or equal to negative 1. So 0 minus 0 greater than or equal to negative 1. It's asking if 0 is greater than or equal to negative 1. Well, 0 is greater than a negative number, so then the answer is yes. I would use that ordered pair. So now we're gonna try with the next one. Again, you write down your equation, negative three, I mean, three X minus Y greater than equal to negative one. And again, now we're gonna substitute in X and Y, one and four. So three times one minus a four. Notice I put it in parentheses, always replace variables in parentheses in case of sign changes to so negative one. So we get three times one is the three minus a four greater than or equal to negative one. Three minus four is a negative one. It says greater than or equal to. There's a line, which means I can be equivalent size. The negative one is equal to the negative one, so the answer would be yes. I'm gonna try our third point. Again, write your equation, three X minus Y greater than or equal to negative one. Identify your X and Y, and we are substituting back in. Three times R negative one, minus a2 greater than or equal to negative 1. So 3 times the negative, there's our negative 3. That's a minus 2 greater than or equal to negative 1. Now here, remember, same sides, same sides, same signs, you add them. They get larger. So I'm short $3, I'm short $2, I'm short $5. It's saying that negative 5 is greater than or equal to negative 1. Negative 5 is more left on the number line so it's smaller than the negative one, so then your answer here would be no. On example three, it's asking us to sketch the graph of the linear inequality. So they gave us the inequality, x minus y is less than two. So first thing we wanna do is you're gonna take your original equation and I'm gonna solve it for y. So x minus y less than two, subtract x over, negative y is less than negative x plus 2. Then using the rules of um, dividing by a negative with inequalities, you must change the direction. So negative makes it positive y, but the inequality instead of being less than is now a greater than symbol. Negative and makes it positive x, positive negative, and negative 2. Then what you're going to do is identify your slope and your y-intercept. Remember, your y-intercept is the number that's by itself. So our y-intercept is 0, negative 2. The slope is the coefficient attached to the variable x, which is a 1. So our slope, which is m, is a 1. So I'm treating as 1 over 1, letting us know that we are rising 1 and then to the right one, up 1 to the right one. The next thing we need to do is identify if we have a solid line or a dashed line. Since our inequality is a greater than only, there is no line underneath it, we are a dashed line. So you have enough information right now to graph our inequality. Remember, it started at negative two, 
So we're gonna put a point at negative two on that. Y axis. And our slope is saying it's rising one to the right one. So we went up one to the right one, up one to the right one. So I went to the X intercept and I'm gonna do a dashed line for our graph. Then you need to decide which side of the inequality you are going to shade. Since we did not go through the origin, we're gonna test the point zero, zero. So you're gonna take your equation that we solved for y greater than x minus two and plug in zero, zero. Is zero bigger than zero minus two? Is zero greater than negative two? That is yes. Since zero, zero is above the line, this is where our origin point was, and it made it a true statement, we shade up. On example four, it says sketch the graph of the linear inequality 5x plus 4y less than or equal to 12. Again, this is in standard form for us. You could do y, x and y intercepts, but then 5 doesn't go into 12 evenly. So we're going to rewrite this to see y equals mx plus b format. So we have 5x plus 4y is less than or equal to 12. And solve for y. So we're going to subtract 5x. So we get 4y less than or equal to negative 5x plus 12 divide everything by four. So we get y is less than or equal to negative five over four x plus three. I did not switch the inequality because I did not divide by a negative. You only switch the inequality direction when you divide by a negative attached to that variable y. Again, we need to identify our slope, our y-intercept, if we're solid or dashed. So when we look at our thing, our y-intercept, as a three, so we're at zero, three. The slope, it's negative five over four, because that's what's attached to x. So we're gonna go down five, and then to the right four. Then we notice that it's a less than equal to, so we are a solid line. So again, we're gonna plot our point. It starts at positive three now. And our slope says we're falling five units and then going to the right four. So one, two, three, four, five. I went down five over four. Kind of looks like a triangle. And we're a solid line going through those points. Again, we did not go through the origin. The origin is right here in the middle. It is below the line. So we are gonna test Zero, zero. So, y less than or equal to negative five fourths x plus three. We're plugging in zero. Is zero smaller than or equal to three? Well, zero is actually smaller than three. That is a true statement. So the answer is yes. Now, zero, zero happens to be below the line. So we would shade down. Okay, the next two examples, example five and example six, go hand in hand. So example five says working to meet a budget. Your budget requires you to earn at least $300 per week. You work two part-time jobs. One is at a fast food restaurant, which pays $10 per hour and the other is tutoring for $12 per hour. They want us to let X represent the number of hours you work at the restaurant and let Y represent the number of hours you work as a tutor. They want us to write a linear inequality that represents the different number of hours you can work at each job in order to um, invent your budget requirements. So meet our budget requirements. So first thing we need to do is write a verbal model. So 
we want our hourly pay at the fast food restaurant. And we're multiplying that by the number of hours we work there. Then we are going to add our hourly pay tutoring. times the number of hours tutoring. And remember it said they want us to earn at least $300. So we need to be greater than or equal to our minimum weekly earnings. So now we, so we've identified a verbal model. Now we need to identify our labels. Remember what they said. They said in the problem, they wanted to let X represent the number of hours you work at the restaurant. So hours. That's going to be the variable X. Hours work tutoring. they said was the letter Y. Our hourly rate for the restaurant. They said that our hourly rate was $10 per hour. Our hourly rate tutoring. told us that our hourly rate tutoring was $12 per hour. And then our minimum weekly earnings. They told us that we need to earn at least $300. So we did a verbal model, we identified our labels, now we want to create our inequality. Remember it says hourly pay at the food restaurant, where hourly pay at the restaurant is $10 with an X because X is what's being used to represent the hours. So we're looking at 10X plus our 12Y has to be greater than or equal to our 300. So part five, example five wanted us to create our equation. So set up a verbal model, pull the information from the text, identify your label pieces, and then go to the creation. Example six, want us to graph the inequality from example five and find the two ordered pairs, X, Y, that identify the number of hours you can work at each job in order to meet your budget requirements. So again, we have our equation, 10X plus 12Y squared with the third, 300. So we need to solve this equation for Y. So first thing we're gonna do is subtract our 10X over. Y squared equals negative 10x plus 300. Divide every single piece by 12. So we get y is greater than equal to now negative 10 and 12 are even numbers, so they're both divisible by 2. So we get negative 5 over 6x plus 300 divided by 12 is 25. So we have an equation. So what I did is I created a graph and I labeled my x-axis because that's where the x's were. X's represented the fast food restaurant, so they were on the horizontal plane. Number of hours at a fast food restaurant. The vertical side, which is our y-axis, was the number of hours in tutoring. So normally when you're doing a budget graph, you are only in quadrant one, which is all positive and negative, positive, positive values for x and y. Um, so we have our equation. Um, I did increments of three units, even though we have 25, so it's gonna be a little, off here and then we're going to plot our points so another way of going about this is actually finding your x and y intercepts so in our original equation we have 10x plus 12y greater than or equal to 300. so if i do 10x greater than or equal to 300 and then 12y greater than or equal to 300 i can find when it hits the x-axis and when it hits the y-axis so if you divide both sides by 10 x is greater than or equal to 30. 
If we divide both sides by 12, then the y is greater than or equal to 25. So we have an ordered point at 30 comma zero for our x-intercept and at zero comma 25 for the y-intercept. So if I plot those two points, our x-axis is at 30, our y-intercept is a little bit past the 24 mark, and then you connect your graph straight down where they intersect. You have your plane. Now I wanted us to find values where the graphs could be ordered pairs. So we need to figure out our shading pattern as to where we're gonna be above the line or below the line for our most ideal point. Since we didn't go through the origin, you can test zero, zero into the equation. So 10 times X is zero plus 12 times zero, zero is greater than or equal to 300, which that would be a false statement. Any numbers below the line would not work for our equation. Any numbers below the line would not work for the equation because you can even test it right here. Zero is bigger than or equal to 25, which is false. And that's where the zero, zero is at. So we need to be values above the line. So we're looking for numbers that are gonna be up in this region, above the line, or exactly on the line. Because remember, it said the word greater than or equal to. So I can be any ordered pair on the black line or any point above the line to make it valid. So I could have picked the ordered pair. Let's see. Let me see if I can get an exact number. So we're looking at a point that can be here at 1810. That would be about 1810 right there. I could pick a point, any point up in this region. So I can say 2712 would be a valid point. If I plug that into my inequality, it's gonna, meet, it's gonna let us meet our minimum requirement. If I picked a point below the line and plugged into the equation, it would give me a false answer.